Hi, my name is Susie Bash. I'm a neuroradiologist at RadNet. So this talk will focus on Subtle Medical's AI solutions of deep learning based image reconstruction and synthetic image generation. And we'll also highlight the importance of clinical validation of these DL tools, which enhance image quality, patient comfort, and workflow efficiency. So what is uh, deep learning for image reconstruction? Well, this is an AI tool that allows superior perceived image quality, higher perceived spatial resolution, higher perceived signal to noise ratio, reduced artifacts, higher perceived uh, contrast to noise ratio, reduced dose, and it enables fast scans. So it turns out patients really don't like being in the MR scanner. 30% of patients have a, a significant anxiety reaction. So anything we can do to get them in and out faster is a very positive thing. So how does DLR work? Well, Imaging facilities alter their protocols to decrease the scan time, which we call fast scans. And that acceleration can be accomplished by undersampling and reducing excitations or by reducing the imaging matrices. Then DL uh, reconstruction is applied to that fast data set to restore the image quality by denoising and often by uh, sharpness enhancement. So if you're thinking about applying deep learning reconstruction in your imaging enterprise, should you go with a vendor neutral tool or an OEM? So it turns out that both offer deep learning, but OEMs are at variable stage right now of fruition with FDA approval. Some are approved, some are not yet. But the advantage of Settle Medical's vendor neutral solution is their FDA approved Settle MR and Settle PET operate in the DICOM space rather than the K space like OEMs. So it can be used on any scanner brand of any age. And this allows a virtual upgrade to legacy scanners. So it improves the uh, ROI by extending the scanner life. Uh, right now, the OEM's DLR products are limited only to their newer scanners uh, at this point in time. So you can basically take a routine MRI exam slot from 30 to 40 minutes down to just 15 minutes. And that's on table and off table time, including scan time. Now, Subtle Medical has some uh, very uh, uh, wonderful, exciting um, uh, AI tools. We'll take a look at four of them here. Uh, Subtle Pet allows uh, or provides higher image quality and allows up to four times faster acquisition and reduced radio tracer dose. Subtle MR, again, higher image quality, but allows 40 to 65% faster acquisition. Subtle GAD, 90% reduction in the gadolinium contrast that you need, and then also synthetic stir. Now, both Subtle GAD and Subtle Synth are in development right now, not yet FDA approved, but we can get basically 100% acceleration because it's synth synthesizing the uh, uh, stir sequence. So Subtle PET denoises scans that are acquired 75% faster. Here's the original scan that took 18 minutes. If you alter your protocol and go faster, you can get that down to four and a half minutes, but the images are quite noisy. You can then enhance that fast, noisy image with a subtle pet. That deep learning um, really provides a, a big boost in the signal to noise ratio. Subtle PET also enhances low count PET scans. So low count scans, um, be, are, we call it a low count scan if you reduce the radio tracer dose or you uh, acquire the images faster. So if you look here at this 25% reduced dosed image on the uh, right hand side, if you enhance that with Settle Pet, hopefully you can see that that noisy image sort of transformed into that higher image quality. And I'm gonna show you some different examples of pets so with using different radio tracers and different vendors. The original scan on the left took 16 minutes. You can alter the protocol, get down to four minutes and then restore the image quality with deep learning. Uh, here's another whole body pet that was took 15 minutes, alter the protocol, get down to five minutes. Watch closely on this image here and you see it transformed by the deep learning enhancement to restore that image quality. Here's a patient with a lot of metastases. This exam took 28 minutes. We can alter the protocol, get it down to seven minutes, but again, we have that very noisy image and then we restore the quality uh, with deep learning enhancement. You can see here uh, again also in the contrast to noise ratio, those uh, lesions become very conspicuous. Um, here's another uh, exam. It took 28, a minute, 28 minutes, altering the protocol to get it down to seven and then restoring the image quality with deep learning. Uh, here's a pediatric patient, 24 minutes. You can get this exam down to six minutes and then uh, restore image quality. You can see why this would be very helpful in the pediatric population. It's hard for children to, to hold still for this long. 
Um, and here again, uh, this is an FDG Brain PET CT. We went 75% faster and had less radiation dose, but can maintain uh, that image quality. Here on the left hand side, the standard of care and the subtle enhanced on the right in this patient with a metastasis. So uh, really improved uh, quality here. Let's take a look now at subtle MR. It's a, the same sort of um, idea, the standard of care on the left, that fast in the middle, and uh, we've reduced the time about in half, and then we apply deep learning and we have a big bump in signal to noise and contrast to noise. And you know, if you just compare this image and this image here, you can see that this image is actually much better, but we went a lot faster. Uh, you also get a gain in the you know, contrast to noise ratio. If you look at this little schwannoma on the standard of care, here's the fast. Actually, you get a bump in the CNR on the uh, fast image, but the image is noisy. And this image here on the right, we maintain that high contrast to noise ratio, but we've increased the signal to noise as well. Um, it, and this can be applied to any body part. So here's an example of a knee. Here's the fast DL knee on the right. Here's another example of a knee. Look how beautiful this image is here. Um, here's a shoulder, fast DL on the right hand side, and here's an example of a foot. See this artifact right here? Um, it's gone uh, on the fast DL. You know, you, when you move faster, it decreases uh, motion artifact. Um, I like this example because you see there's two little white matter foci here. They're almost imperceptible in the standard of care. When we go fast, again, you get a bump in that contrast to noise ratio. So now we can see these little foci, but the image is quite noisy. Apply fast DL, and they're very conspicuous. So you can see how something like that could be useful in patients with multiple sclerosis. Here's a standard image on the left, the fast, the fast DL. Look at the tremendous difference. Just compare this to the standard of care. And we actually get extra gains in certain areas, like in the brain, because it's not just denoising, it's also allowing sharpness enhancement. So you see here, this patient has three little metastases, this cortically based one, very, very difficult to see. You know, finding these little mets could actually save a person's life. If you go faster, again, you increase that contrast to noise ratio, but it's, the image is noisy. And then fast DL, look at how much more conspicuous this metastasis is here, actually all three of them, compared to the standard of care. Again, you can really make an impact in a patient's life. Let's take a look now at subtle GAD. So subtle GAD allows us to have 90% uh, gadolinium dose reduction. This is a product in development. Here's a patient with a tumor at 100% contrast, the homogeneous enhancement of this tumor. If you drop your GAD dose down to only 10%, you really don't see any enhancement whatsoever in the tumor. But then if you take this image and apply deep learning, uh, you can now, it looks just exactly like the standard of care. This is a very important issue now with, and you hear everyone talking about gadolinium deposition. Obviously, if you have a chelate that has a high thermodynamic and kinetic stability, like a macrocyclic ionic agent, it's going to hold the gadolinium better. But the truth is, is all agents release gadolinium, and it doesn't just deposit in our body, but it gets into the water. So you can see how a product like this is a, a very exciting tool. Here's full dose here, this meningioma, and this is 90% reduction in dose, and it looks just like the original. Here's another patient, this is a uh, pre-contrast. At full dose, we see this meningioma. If you drop that dose by you know 90% less, you lose the contrast enhancement, but then you can take this image right here, apply deep learning, and it looks uh, uh, very close to the full dose. Okay, let's talk now about Subtle Synth. This is a, um, I'm very excited about this product. This is in development right now. Um, and basically what we're doing, what they're doing is they're synthesizing the STIR sequence. Now eventually they'll synthesize, you know, sequences all throughout the body in different exams. They started with the STIR because STIR, you know, traditionally is signal deprived sequence. It takes a long time, um, almost, you know, often almost up to five minutes. And basically you can shave off all this time on the exam by synthesizing it. Um, here's another example, here's the original, and here is the synthetic stir. And how do you do this? So this is done by, they use the sagittal T1 and sagittal T2 inputs to synthesize the stir. Um, so we have higher signal in these sequences. This is the original stir here, and this is the synthesized stir here. You see the high uh, image quality. Uh, again, T1, T2, here's the stir. Look at the CSF here on the stir. It really was not an optimal stir, but when you synthesize it, um, you see it, it much, much, much uh, easier to see. Here's a T1 and a T2 input. Here's the stir. You see some artifact right here, and this is the synthesized stir on the right. 
Uh, if you look here, this patient has abnormal marrow, signal intensity at S1, T1, T2. Here's the stir, and here's the synthesized stir. Again, T1, T2 in this patient with compression fractures, the actual stir, and the synthesized stir. So this is really a very, very nice looking image. Um, really is, you know, outperforming the standard of, you know, the actual stir sequence. Uh, T1, T2 in this patient with dyskinesis osteomyelitis, here's the stir, and here's the synthesized uh, stir sequence. And the last example here, T1, T2, here's the stir. You can barely even see the core. This is really an, a suboptimal um, stir. And then on the synthesized, uh, look at how much nicer that looks because it's coming, it's really generated from the T1 and the T2. So when it comes to AI tools, what's hype and what is reality? Turns out vendors offer very high value claims for AI solutions. Uh, how do we know that they deliver what's promised? And that really highlights the importance of doing multi-center, multi-reader clinical validation trials. So we've done some of these. This one is deep learning vendor agnostic DICOM based reconstruction enables 40% faster spine MR scans, which match or exceed the quality of standard of care. And this was a multi-center, multi-reader prospective trial. This was published in clinical neuroradiology last year. And what we found was that the fast DL was statistically superior to standard of care for signal to noise uh, ratio and imaging artifacts. These are the kind of images we saw in the trial, although we're blinded, so we don't know which one we're looking at, but standard on the left, fast in the middle, and the enhanced image on the right-hand side. You see that disc protrusion uh, is uh, very well seen on the enhanced image. Um, and what we found is that DL matches or exceeds perceived image quality uh, of uh, standard of care spine MR exams, enabling really a 40% scan time reduction. The DL qualitatively outperformed standard of care for reduction in artifacts and perceived signal to noise. We also applied a quantitative measure or structural similarity index. We wanted to make sure that deep learning wasn't introducing any kind of errors and the SSIMs matched, which uh, attests to the integrity and preservation after DL processing. And this study really suggests the potential for routine utility of deep learning in clinical practice. Another question we have is, is it possible to effectively apply more than one AI solution to obtain the benefits of both tools while still maintaining image quality and accuracy? So a natural pair was to do NeuroQuant and subtle MR products. And the reason why is, again, we want to make sure that we're not introducing any errors or altering the volume of different uh, regions in the brain. So this is an MS patient who went 50% faster. But how do we know after we apply deep learning if this plaque is the exact same volume of this plaque? It's very, very important to have a quantitative uh, component. And so this quantitative component can be applied to anything, such as patients with memory loss, you know, their hippocampal volume the same before and the same after you apply deep learning. So we actually decided to look at a population of patients with memory loss. This is entitled Deep Learning Enables 60% Accelerated Volumetric Brain MRI While Preserving Quantitative Performance, a prospective multi-center, multi-reader trial. This was uh, published in AJNR last year. And what we found was that FASTL was statistically superior to standard of care for perceived quality across every single feature that we looked at. These are all the features that we looked at and the DL enhanced uh, really outperformed. So standard image, fast image, one enhanced here. So again, we were blinded, but look at the difference in the quality between that and the standard. Um, it's just, a, it's really a significant difference. We found no difference in the quantitative volumetric biomarkers or the clinical classification for both standard of care and fast DL. So if the segmentation looks the same on the top as it does on the bottom, that's good. You want it to, that means that there's no difference in segmentation. Um, here again, the images on the top are the standard. These are the fast AI. The segmentation was identical. So whatever the hippocampal occupancy C score was here, 0.68, it was the same on the fast DL, telling us that we were not introducing any errors by deep learning. So DL reconstruction allows 60% scan time reduction while maintaining that high volumetric quantification accuracy, consistent clinical classification, perceived superior image quality um, when compared to that standard of care. And so this trial really supported the reliability, efficiency, and utility of DL-based enhancement for quantitative imaging. And the hope is that these shorter scan times may boost the utilization of volumetric quantitative MRI in routine clinical settings. We also did do some um, uh, clinical validation trials with the subtle synth and very exciting results here. This is one deep learning generated synthetic stir is interchangeable with and better in quality than conventional stirs. We're just starting to write the manuscript here on these. 
Um, and then we also looked at a, um, a subpopulation of trauma patients really looking very closely at the lesions to see if they look the same. And what we found for both of these trials is that DL-generated synthetic STIR spine MR images were interchangeable with conventionally acquired STIR, but really providing a significantly higher image quality, suggesting the potential uh, for routine clinical uh, practice utility. So in summary, AI solutions are playing a critically important role in neuroimaging by enhancing image quality, workflow efficiency, and uh, patient care. And really the adoption of Subtle's uh, vendor neutral DL technology throughout our imaging enterprise is an important step in uh, RadNet's commitment to leveraging breakthrough AI tools to deliver really a more uh, comfortable patient experience, improve productivity, and superior image quality. Thank you so much.